Hey! Let's animate some photos! Movie Boy! Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> hey, Movie Boy here. Value statement, value statement. Call to action, call to action. Tagline! You didn't come here to hear me prattle on, did you? You came here to do stuff like this. <gasps> Ooh! So, let's go. The photos I'm going to be working with are part of the movie I worked on last year, The Remarkable Life of John Weld. The issue with documentaries like this one is that typically you are in a uh, lack of actual video or film footage, especially in historical documentaries. So they bring in people like me to spruce up the photos they do have on hand, whether it's adding color, dimension, or movement. It doesn't matter whether you're working on a photo from 100 years ago or something you took yesterday, the same concepts are generally the same. Step one. I show you two fingers. Uh, step one is, of course, to find a photo, <laughs> which sounds obvious, but it's meant uh, that you need to look for a photo that looks like something you can separate items in the foreground and background and create a camera move through it. Any photo is not going to work for this. Step two is you're going to take that photo and separate your foreground object from your background object uh, or other layers of objects if you have stuff that's even closer or mid-ground objects in the camera. Step. 2.5, after you've separated them, then you need to uh, clean up the areas behind your foreground. So you're gonna have to clean up your background. Step three is you will have to take your elements and uh, bring them into a compositing program like After Effects. And step four, you will have to add some kind of camera movement to add depth and animation to that original photo. Ta-da! So let's go. We have a photo of Pancho Barnes, uh, one of the early aviators in... Wow, speaking of aviators, living near an airport, you get a lot of airplanes. So speaking of airplanes, Pancho Barnes is an early uh, female aviator in America's history. Uh, unfortunately, not as famous as Amelia Earhart, but she's in there. Real straightforward. Camera comes in, we are just closing in on the uh, foreground objects, our humans here, and uh, the plane in the background are just simple background. Now, of course, if you notice in this one, their feet are sliding a little bit, but that wasn't a big deal at that time. So here we are with the original photo. And it was, you know, pretty simple when it comes down to it. You've got your original, and then uh, using various masking techniques, um, we cut out our group here. Uh, a lot of it was just some of the uh, masking techniques that I teach in other videos, which I think I will indicate here. Good grief. Everyone's trying to fly at the same time. Just stop. Stop it. Planes. The next big problem is you're gonna have to clean up the background behind it. You have to, in this case, remove these people because your camera move is going to eventually expose the original foreground object still glued to the background image. You have to clean it up. And in this case, you have to use every technique in the book. Now, one of the big ones uh, is one of my more popular videos uh, showing how to uh, heal backgrounds in images. That'll work um, a bit for simpler backgrounds, ones where you can use uh, the content aware fill to easily uh, fill the background area here. To give you an idea of what you need to do, create a new layer. Call, in this case, we're going to you know, call it cloner. And we know we've, we've already securely um, have our people separated, so we don't have to worry about damaging anything. So on the cloner layer, you can go over here to our stamp tool right there, or you can hit the hotkey S2, bring it out. We'll take maybe this part of it here. Come on down here, you know, see how it starts to ghost, and that'll give you an idea of whether you've lined it up properly or if you're off or not. And when you think you've got it, start painting it in. And now see, obviously, you can see we are, 
grabbing from here and pulling down this part of the wing here. So you gotta be careful how you're doing it. And you're gonna have to do all kinds of stuff because obviously we have this one here. We've got stuff there. Now, of course, you can clone off of other objects sometimes. It, well, nope. The angle on this is too sharp. It'll, it'll bend like crazy. So this is gonna be a lot more problematic. So maybe I just wanna focus on Cloning him out right there. You will have times where you have so little information to work off, you're just gonna have to do it piece by piece. The good news is, in this case, and we'll start right here before it starts intersecting with this plane here. I see you can already see how it's, so maybe we just add a little, and then we just add a little more, and we add a little more. But now, we got this longer piece, so now, now, we've got something that works far better. Now, this is still roughing it. You can see some blending problems like what I just did there. That uh, is the grunt work of this when you've got something as complex as an old uh, uh, biplane hidden behind people. But that's what they pay you for in these projects, or at least that's what you better be getting paid for. All right, so obviously you use cloning. I was using cloning on different parts of the engine here to stretch things out. So whether it's more of the engine to remove this guy, whether it's deepening this shadow to remove this guy, you just start from one end to the other, work on cloning techniques, matching techniques, everything you can to get these people out. So that eventually, ladies and gentlemen, you get to something more like this. And this was enough for the shot. Don't waste your time doing work you're not going to see. But eventually, you're going to need to save a new Photoshop file with the clean layers so that every little cloner and stamp piece isn't separated out. You want things to move more simply. I've got my foreground, I've got my background, and I still have the original. And I'll show you why you may want to keep an original photo. Uh, and we will save this out. I've already saved mine out, of course, but save it as a new clean version or What's the deal with the airport? Could I get any more white? We flip over into After Effects. Let's make a new composition and we'll just call it Tutorial. And we will make it, eh, we'll just make it seven seconds. It's already there. And now the dogs, the neighborhood dogs are going in. So if we want to bring in our... <laughs> really? The dogs, they'd be a barking. Let's import the Photoshop file that we have here. Now we need to import it in as a composition and I typically like to retain layer sizes on mine just so that it brings in the crops on each piece as it's separated out. So you're not always working from the full comp size for every layer. Like for example, the foreground people will come in crop around where they are, not necessarily uh, at the widest point of the uh, thing. So just bring them on in. Uh, you want editable layer styles, usually, because, yeah, if you merge it all together, then what was the point of having a Photoshop file in the first place? Ha! <laughs> this composition is at, you know, 5,600 pixels by, you know, almost 4,300 pixels. Um, even though eventually this is going down to HD level, you do not want to cut down your layers ahead of time to say a um, HD or a 4K resolution. The reason being that you need every one of those pixels uh, to have the camera move around and you start cropping all that down, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot when you start to want to wander away from it. So we've got this large version at its original scale. Um, and you can see original, background, foreground. One of the first things we're going to have to do is to turn these 2D elements into 3D elements. And the easy way to do that is just to select your foreground, select your background, make them both 3D. Uh, we need to also add a camera, new camera. 
The whole way of selling the depth between these flat 2D elements is to work off of something called parallax. The whole idea of parallax is just the way your foreground elements shift differently than background elements when you are zooming in or zooming past something. The easiest way to see this is to take your thumb, hold it up like this, and close one eye. If you suddenly go from one eye to the other, you'll notice your thumb moving around despite the background basically being the same. That's because in its own way, your binocular vision camera went from here to there and just that little bit of movement had a big movement there. This is the same thing you want to take advantage of in your camera movements with your virtual cameras in After Effects or other uh, compositing programs. Something to keep in mind is that a wide angle lens will exaggerate this movement far more than a, say, a telephoto lens. In general terms, your eyeball is in the range of 50 millimeters if it were a camera lens. So anything less than 50 millimeters is generally considered wide angle lens and anything deeper is considered a zoom, well not a zoom, a telephoto uh, a lens. Uh, so in my case, I'm going to choose a 35 millimeter lens and I'm not going to worry about depth of field right now. We have our camera and we have our layers, but we need to separate them out. In this case, I would like to take my background layer and push it further away. Now I'm going to turn off the original real quick here and we can hit the P key to bring up our position. So let's start moving this back. Oh, fantastic. But you'll note that, yeah, it's further behind, but now we have a slight issue of it, um, an issue of shrinkage. To help us realign the background, let's turn on that original, which is on a 2D layer, so we see how big this needs to be. Let's hit the uh, T key. I'm going to hold down the Shift key to bring up the T, the opacity, uh, the opacity, yeah, that's the things you do to remember it. Um, and let's bring the opacity down. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key again and hit S for scale. And I see that I'm at 100%. Uh, I need to scale this back up. And there we go. Now things are appear to be better aligned. So let's bring that opacity back up. Airplane, 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 and I'm going to uh, hit the C key, or you can just go up here and grab your camera. And I'm just going to rotate around to show you what we've got here. We have our human beings, we have our airplane, and we've got our little pink camera over here. That's our official one. So let's go back to our active camera, get a position here, and maybe a rotation here as well. I hit the P key for position, then I held down the shift key and hit R so that, yeah, I know, I'm still helping out the beginners, so all you pros, hush. So I'm going to set a keyframe for my position, I'm going to set a keyframe for my orientation, and I'm going to move five seconds in. You can either go up here to... Uh, choose different cameras if you need to work your way in different movements or you can just keep hitting the C key and it will rotate see we'll move over here rotate between the various axes or rotation cameras and in this case I want to just do a simple zoom so I'm five in I've got my orientation my position and I'm just going to zoom on in we'll just do it you know real easy peasy and maybe I actually want to be a little higher, so I'm going to hit C a few times and go up here like this. And I'm going to test that out. So I'm just going to hit the N key to end this work area right here. And I'm going to hit the space bar to go for a preview. All right. 
And we have a pretty standard uh, movement, basically just zooming in and repositioning a little bit. Now, in our example here, yes, their feet are slipping a little bit. There are more advanced techniques. We'll go into some and we'll go into others, but this, this thing could get lengthy, lengthy, lengthy if we tried to deal with every possible thing that can happen as your camera movement goes. Now, if we wanted to, of course, we could go really uh, intense in this. Oh, see, and right there, that, that's the problem. We're starting to run out of photo. And then maybe we zoom in even more and just really come in onto Poncho here. I'm fidgeting. I, I do that stuff, you know. So we'll hit the space bar again and magic will happen. Now we have a far more dramatic shot as we come in on Poncho and the plane and it's very exaggerated and far better than just looking at a static photo. Ooh. And as you can see, the same process is done over and over again here. We had this original photo of John and Kate out golfing. So I used the, the different techniques, like in my other videos of, of fixing backgrounds, uh, to bring in elements of the hillside and the trees. And as you can see, real, real tough job there on that one. Ooh in this case, things got a little more tricky because uh, no amount of cloning techniques or whatnot was going to give me the front end of this car. So I started going through and trying to find uh, other photos of cars and eventually came across this one here. Brought that into Photoshop just fused on the front of a different car that I could to match things up as best as I could. And then of course, cut out John and Kate. As simple as this one looks, there is, there, there is a twist point here. And that is quite simply that this ground here actually extends all the way from underneath their feet all the way to the top. And we were talking about how um, the poncho photo of the feet were starting to slip because they didn't look really locked down to that space. So the advanced technique we're using here is that I actually built this background here as a vanishing point uh, object. I have a whole tutorial showing you how to do fancy schmancy um, dimensionalizing of, is that a word? I believe it is, of dimensionalizing your background images because sometimes you're gonna need uh, things to be broken out in a way you can't just do by cutting off two-dimensional flat um, screen. Sometimes you have building corners, or in this case, the horizon of where the ground uh, they're standing on goes from the car to their feet. So we're going to skip over how we built this and did this in. Go watch the other tutorial to look up that advanced technique. So in the meantime, I at least will show you kind of what was done. So let's go from the active camera I have here from camera three to this custom view. And there we go. I'm gonna again bring up a camera here. Now from this angle, the ground looks really stretched out because it is actually being projected from a plane. Um, and the background, and oh, and there we go. Let's carefully add them in. So there, there's our humans, our, our flat foreground element. But the act, the act, the act ground the background, the background is actually stretched out so that from the camera's point of view, things look hunky-dory. Now, when you do this, your camera is in some ways freed up because you actually have some dimension there, but at the same time, as you saw in the other view, things can look really stretched really fast depending on where your camera goes. In this case, when you hit the Space bar, oh, I remembered it this time. When you hit the space bar, uh, you will eventually end up with this thing. Now, the other thing I like about it is that the parallax is helped out. Um, I've got the camera moving up away from the grass and the fact that it's an actual dimension layer helps sell the effect. And another example of how we can bring in some movement into our photos. Uh, um, hmm. You know something? This is getting too long to fit into just one little video. So sorry, folks, I'm going to have to make a part two because we just got so much stuff here.
Well, then that means I'm gonna have to do a quick one from the vaults or one from the shelves. And in this case, it's going to be this, it is a Starship Troopers bug. I don't even know where I got it. I don't even know how long ago I've had it now, but I've had it for quite a while. So that's my Starship Troopers bug. Uh, if there was anything that was too confusing, anything that just uh, didn't work for you, uh, or uh, you just need more explanation, or there's something you want added on to this, let me know down in the comments. And uh, in the meantime, like, subscribe, share, ring the bell for notifications. Oh, that is loud. Okay, uh, that's it for now. Thank you, and come again.